Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the SpaceX Interplanetary Transportation System mod, which is being made by forum user Thrim. And this is one impressively large mod, and I mean large as in the simply gigantic parts that you have in this pack, which may be some of the largest parts I think we've seen in quite some time, which kind of makes sense, as of course this mod is looking to add into the game the insanely awesome SpaceX interplanetary transportation system that Elon Musk hopes will one day take people to Mars. Hopefully sooner rather than later, so let's jump right on into the space plan here and take a look at what all does make this up. Now I know what you're saying, we're building a rocket, why are we coming into here? Well these parts are so massive that they just simply fit a lot better inside here than in the VAB. So what we're actually going to do is I've made a custom SpaceX group over here as unfortunately no matter what you type into the search bar you can't get all of the mods parts together on one page and you also have a lot of the other parts in there as well so we'll go with this custom category now usually i also do like to throw in another part usually a command pod to show a size comparison but I'm fairly confident that the size of these parts will frankly speak for themselves. So let's actually take a look at the SpaceX ITS core transport first and foremost. And let's click that and we're inside of it because, oh boy, there we go. Zoom out. Beautiful. There it is, folks. The SpaceX ITS crew transport system which is freaking massive. As you can see here, 2,100 tons and can carry 104 Kerbals. Minimum of one crew member to operate, but total a hundred and freaking four. Now the idea for this in the future is uh, that four of those Kerbals will basically be the flight crew and they'll be visible in the internal view and then the remaining hundred are just you know living it up inside. Now for right now there actually is not a custom internal view they're using the uh, standard shuttle internals uh, but that is something coming down the road eventually the mod maker is wanting to add in a custom view that you know is befitting of this glorious glorious ship. Now let's actually take a look at it over here real quick just to get a good look. It's of course not a direct copy of the ITS from the presentation that was done by Elon Musk, but rather is definitely seems to be a bit more Kerbalized of a version, which personally I prefer. We are of course in Kerbal Space Program, so I like things to be just a bit Kerbalized. And yeah, overall I do love the look of this thing. We have the crew hatch over here, a uh, rear end, which is where you put all the engines, and there's plenty of attachment points here. As you can see, we've got them all around the outside, and of course several on the inside right there that are a little difficult to get to, but we'll talk about that momentarily. And then we have a little docking port attachment bit right here, which I might as well grab this docking port and pop it in so you can see it in its full glory. Oh, oh boy, I misclicked even while holding Alt. Of course I did, of course I did. Let's try that again, so let's grab that. I said grab that, beautiful, and boom, there we go, excellent. Now we'll talk more about the docking port in a second. Let's actually get back to the actual stats on this thing. Again, 104 crew, it does have its own built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel with quite a bit of torque. It does the standard crew report, has 5,000 electric charge, and then also has 175,500 liquid fuel and a whopping 214,500 oxidizer on board this thing, which is a heck of a lot of fuel. This thing alone can easily get into space, which is uh, one of my slight issues I have with it, but we'll talk more about it in a moment. Now, we also do have to go along with the crew transport. We have, of course, the orbital tanker that Elon Musk talked about as well, which is basically a carbon copy of it, just without the large crew capacity. It does still have a minor cockpit in here, but no other crew windows up here. As well, of course, it's designed for only for crew with a minimum of one. This thing also does, of course, have a built-in data transmitter reaction wheel crew report, 5,000 electric charge, but this one 
carries a lot more fuel because of course it is a tanker which has it at 225,000 liquid fuel and 275,000 oxidizer. Now again you would put a docking port right here on this thing, the idea being that you send up the crew transport into orbit first, then send the actual tanker up second, dock them together, refuel the crew one, and then the crew one goes on its merry way to Duna. And that is a wonderful thing. Though uh, that brings me to my uh, my first slight complaint, which I mentioned earlier, is that the simple cr uh, actual fuel capacity that these things have is freaking massive. I was able to get to Duna easily with more than enough fuel with uh, this whole system, which I, I think just needs to be balanced a bit more. Now I can kind of understand why it is as it is right now, because the mod designer actually designed everything off of the stats from the presentation. So I believe the uh, engines, ISP and thrust are setup values given by Elon Musk, and same with the booster mass, etc. So it, I can understand that it's kind of overpowered at the moment, but personally, for the game, I'd like to see it tweaked down a little bit to make it a bit more, shall we say, realistic. But hey, who knows, maybe you prefer not to have that. Now, let's talk about the docking port that we do have real quick. It is a standard docking node, and you know me, I'm a sucker for animations, and boom. There we go. Thing pops right out. Doors open up. And that little docking port section extends outward just a bit. It is actually going to be a very, very tight docking procedure when you do bring up one of these orbital tankers. But uh, that's where the next part comes in. We're going to take a look at here real quick. The SpaceX ITS Twin Nozzle Reaction Control System. This is your RCS, but rather than using monopropellant, these use liquid fuel at a rate of 1.76 per second and 2.157 oxidizer and will produce a thruster power of 50. They are pretty impressive little things, which will, of course, use up some of your liquid fuel and oxidizer, but you have so much, you really don't have to worry about that. Now, as for other parts on here, let's talk about the engines that go with this. Now, we have two different engines here, one specifically for vacuum, one specifically for atmosphere. Now, the SpaceX Raptor is for atmosphere and will produce three electric charge per second, has a maximum thrust in vacuum of 3,000 50, but since it is more for atmosphere, its thrust there is going to be 2,821. It's going to use quite a bit of liquid fuel, but again, with how much you have in here, not a problem, at roughly 77 per second and oxidizer at 94. It does thankfully have some gimbling range and overall is a pretty nice engine. Now, where these are supposed to go on this is kind of awkward because you see we have this large attachment node here, and that is actually the decoupler node, which goes for the booster tank, which we'll look at moment. Momentarily. So for this one, what you actually have to do to attach these engines is put an engine on that node first, then put them on the smaller nodes, and then once you have that done, you take away that one. <laughs> That's the only way you can get to these three. Otherwise, no matter what you do, it just wants to go right on that big node. And then the next one we have is the Raptor of Vacuum, a rocket engine which produces 12 electric charge per second and a mass maximum thrust in vacuum of 3,500 kilonewtons and will use a whopping 84 liquid fuel per second and 102 oxidizer per second. And these will go around the outside ring. As you can see here, we got a lot of good attachment points for them. And you just do that to add actually power your crew transport. Now, as for other bits specifically for this, we're going to need fins and lander legs. So that's where these three parts come in here. Now, we have specific ones for each point. So we have the SpaceX ship landing leg, which is a lifting surface and landing leg, which this one specifically goes on the top, so we can pop that one right there. Now the next one is the right hand side, which we need to go on the other side. And you'll be able to tell that a bit more easily because of course we have the white on top and the black heat shield on the bottom. And then finally we, oh god, which one did I grab? Did I grab the left or the right earlier? Well, we'll find out now. 
Nope, I grabbed the wrong one. There we go. And finally, the left. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. And they go on just like that. And, of course, deploy a very lovely lander leg. So you do have a, quite a sturdy thing there, which is very, very useful. Now, we can also slap onto this thing a ITS a solar panel, which is pretty decent at 200 electric charge per second. But I gotta admit, it is not the uh, prettiest looking thing I've ever seen. It uh, pops out like that as basically like a large fish fin. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't really care for it that much. I personally would rather just put some panels along the side of the thing. But hey, if you like this thing looking like some giant sail ship going through space, have at it, my friends, have at it. But yes, that is the solar panel. Now, this is pretty much everything you need for the uh, crew transport and the orbital tanker. But of course, we have the giant freaking booster, which we attach to that large node that we have in the back here. Uh, which, if we try to do, you'll see, oh boy. There we go, it goes on and you can see the sort of angled line where it attaches to very snugly. And that uh, large node is, of course, a decoupler, so these things will separate quite nicely. Now, let's actually start a new ship here and have the booster as the main main thing. Oh, boy. It's, uh, it's big. That is a very, very big booster. It is essentially the length of the entire space plane hangar. And what you're going to be putting on this is, of course, some booster fins to go on the side to increase aerodynamics and have a lift surface rating of 3.5. We also do have the booster control grid fins, which are wonderful things, which, when deployed, will produce a slight air braking force as well as a bit of extra control. Uh, one problem I'm having, which I think is on me, I think I'm just having issues with maybe a conflict or something, is when I deploy, it's not deploying correctly. It should, of course, be popping outward, but for me, it's popping down. It still functions as it should by helping control this thing, but it's just the animation is off. Now, why I think it's on me is because I've seen videos and pictures of the mod maker having these things deployed and they're just fine. So I think maybe perhaps I need to update my module manager or something along those lines. But yes, a lovely grid fin that works quite nicely. You, of course, are going to need some of these reaction control systems there as well. And then what we're going to do is look at the rear end of this thing and look at all of those attachment points. That is where you're putting, of course, your atmospheric engines again because, well, that's what this thing is for. You're going to need to put a lot of them on there. A lot of them. And my suggestion, after you build this... Turn it into a sub-assembly like I did. And then you never have to put all of those things on again, because dear god, it's... It's a lot of them. Uh, but that is all of the parts for this particular mod. It's uh, not exactly a huge number of them, but they are gigantic. So let's actually leave here and actually go to the launch pad where I have built one fully complete version of the ITS, which is down here, Crew Transport Fool. Oh, uh, this one was fun to try and put together. It does not fit in the vehicle assembly building, but <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. It's almost twice as high as the Vehicle Assembly Building. And look at how many engines I have in Action Group 1. Or, well, Stage 1, rather. Uh, but yeah, that's, um... That's a lot of engines down there, but they will get this thing into orbit perfectly. And now, uh, again, back to my kind of complaint of it being a bit overpowered for Kerbal Space Program. Because uh, my understanding of the ITS in the presentation was that the booster would get this thing into orbit. This would then sit in orbit waiting for refuel ship. Refuel ship come, fill it up, it go to Mars. Thing is, though, you can easily almost get to Duna with just this. <laughs> if you play your cards right, you almost can. Then you just need a little bit of a top-up burst with this thing. It can then land on Duna and make it back to uh, Kerbal here perfectly fine. So that's why I just think it's a little bit overpowered for uh, the game, but still, it is a beautiful system. Let's actually just get a full, good, proper view of this thing. And uh, yeah, with the moon right in the background for a potential other target for this thing. Oh, it's glorious. And just imagine packing 104 Kerbals into this thing and then launching it towards Duna. Good time. So let's actually start this thing up now and launch in a three. Two and one. 
And that's a lot of noise, because that is a crap load of engines down there. And they're going through a lot of fuel. Look at that. We have almost a million oxidizer on this thing. And about three quarters of a million liquid fuel. That is a lot to deal with. But you know what? We're going to use it all wonderfully. And yeah, there we go. We are taking off just fine. A little bit of a slow start on this thing because it just simply is so freaking massive. But once you get going, it's, it flies like a dream. I've actually been able to pilot this thing into an orbit very, very easily without much issues whatsoever. And so, well, that is that, really. I mean, I kind of want to cut its engine because... Well, we're not going to fly this thing all the way into orbit. I don't really see the point in that for just showing it off here. But it can easily get into orbit, get into Duna, all in one package here. And let's actually just cut these engines. Whoop, wrong button. Wrong button again. Oh my god, there we go. You'd think I'd remember key commands after all this time. Let's separate. And then fire up the remaining engines. Now, of course... The three in the center are actually meant to be atmospheric. Oh, oh, I forgot to put one of them on there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, these the ones here that should be three are meant to be atmospheric and for landing on Duna. And then these exterior ones are for your uh, vacuum travels. And that's kind of mesmerizing being in the center there. And on their own, they actually function quite nicely. As you can see, we're already getting quite far up into orbit. Granted, we were on the back of the other rocket down there. Ooh, which I forgot to point out, on the booster rocket, it does have a uh, probe core. So after you do separate, you could actually go and control that thing and land it, or try and land it. God knows I'll never be able to. But yeah, that is the SpaceX Interplanetary Transportation System mod. It's awesome, and has a lot of amazing parts, and this thing... I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of use out of it simply because of the fact that I can transport so many Kerbals at a time with an, a uh, ship that can very easily get where it needs to be. But that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you all have enjoyed. And, of course, that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And, as always, have a good one. Though, quite before you leave there, you may want to see the, uh, the little reaction bits, the reaction control system. There we go. Lovely little thrusters. You gotta love them. All right. Later, folks.